our session. So awesome, Adarok. Thank you for giving us that uh, that detail in about yourself and uh, and helping us understand your background. So pretty experience in the software that's always valid and, and needed within our groups for sure. Um, cool. So within this week, this is kind of more of a formal conversation, one to get updates from everyone, how they're doing, you know, things they're seeing in space. Uh, uh, I wanted this to be less formal than we have before of going over specific agendas and ad hoc updates. Uh, within the other groups per se, uh, for Steve Elliott's group within the interoperability group, I know they had their first meeting this past Monday uh, for the first time in about a, a month or two. He hasn't been able to really get the group together as much, so it's been very unfortunate. Uh, that was just them catching up with how everyone's doing as well. No real updates on the semantic inter So what their main goal is in that group is to help create semantic domain interoperability, uh, interoperability plugins so that people can be able to exchange data across many different uh, data silos, borders, systems, servers, virtual machines, et cetera. So uh, they're still working on that and, and, and looking to improve on the solution. Ravish uh, was scheduled to present the last time we had a meeting as well as today on the updates of the payer subgroup. Uh, he though could not make it today, so he uh, sent his regrets uh, on their use case, but hopefully in the next session, or in the next couple sessions, um, we'll be able to, to show his progress. And within Denise, uh, Pretty much they created an EHR, um, kind of blockchain-based EHR system for patient directory information. Uh, he hasn't, he's been looking to get uh, external buy-in from sponsors from, from different companies, uh, 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 mostly, sorry, different organizations, mostly in the EU to help sponsor his, his project. And so that's his current update of just being able to look for someone who would want to be able to pay for his pilot POC and to, to get it externalized. It's based on Hyperledger Fabric and it's specifically exchanging information related to patient claims and, and, a, and the process they go through a care facility. So uh, those are the updates within the other subgroups. We do have John Hatchell here who has taken on the, uh, who is looking to take on to lead the use case development subgroup and it's been my fault that we haven't got him properly organized into it. So that is my, my on my plate to be able to accomplish and help him get him organized into that and to talk with Marta uh, in, in getting the, the proper sign on and, and, and everything within the Hyperledger SIG so we can add into the group. And so, um, so I'll have to work on that. Um, then we want to stay up to date with uh, Robert's newsletter, though Robert's newsletter now is taking less of a turn into blockchain and healthcare and going into all things kind of more crypto, more philosophical within the healthcare tech space. Uh, but Ray Dalgum's uh, Health Unchained podcast still has a ton of great uh, guests on. So I highly encourage you all uh, joining on and searching those different newsletter and podcasts to stay up to date with, with current news and trends. Um, I had these grand opportunities on here, but it doesn't seem as relevant for everyone in the group. I just want to say, from my experience recently, uh, I joined the Humana team on November 11th, or sorry, November 23rd, and part of my duty within uh, within Humana is to just help the CIOs and the CIO segment groups within the company understand how they can use emerging technology trends, systems, whatever it is, and uh, also helping to organize and create new concepts for this one healthcare business network or blockchain business network called the Synaptic Health Alliance. The Synaptic Health Alliance at first has had this one product called Provider Data Exchange, where they've partnered with in the United States, some other uh, insurance providers such as Aetna, United Health Group, um, Quest Diagnostics and some others. And the Provider Data Exchange Network is able to allow all the different call centers that are part of these six or seven members, multi-plan is also a part of it as well. And instead of having Humana make a calls out to all of the uh, providers that are part of their network, they distribute it equally between all the participants. And so there's less call burden for one call center organization. They're able to cut costs and, and cut the amount of time and pressure 
that each center has to do to make a call and they distribute across Quest, Aetna, all the other partners. And then they, they use um, kind of automated smart contract script to automate and, and um, verify whether that call actually happened and if it took in the right price, et cetera. So a lot of cool claims adjudication and call center adjudication that, that goes on with that use case. Um, but, and, and actually, so it took a while for that to get off and running and to be a fully fledged system because they were using Quorum as Quorum's blockchain at first. And that was when Optum was doing most of the um, product program, project management of the solution. Now at Humana, we're pretty much the, the, we have stakeholders that meet in monthly meetings, quarterly meetings, but the, the, man, the Humana team is, is the one that's building the whole solution. And uh, it's now based on Collido. And Collido is a blockchain managed service provider that is that was actually in the consensus network and then they spun off and they now support all blockchain dlts from ethereum to corda to hyperledger fabric and even sawtooth as well but they're mostly seeing adoption within corda fabric and uh ethereum public and private so and ethereum private is based on quorum now um, though they do not have many excuse me they do not have many clients that are using quorum at the moment i just dropped a very important piece here we go and so yeah everything's based on Collido, and it's been fun to see the progress and uh, provider data exchange which is the product that is the first product out of synaptic health alliance will be released in uh the middle of january and so i hope in the future in february we might get a presentation of pdx and show how and why that, that actually became a cool thing and and that people are actually using it so it's probably the largest and first used big blockchain solution uh, within major partners in healthcare in the US. And uh, I'm proud to be part of the team, but also I know there's a lot of criticism with how long it took to get the solution because it was a long problem and took probably way too long than anyone ever expected. So, um, but yeah, hope to get them on. But we also do have a presentation on January 20th from a company called Provici, Provici. Uh, they've actually created a verifiable credential, uh, or at least they've created a framework for it. They're hoping to get adopted. The, the main team's based out of Arizona, and I think they've, sorry, Arizona in the United States. And I believe they're trying to get it adopted within the local government and local uh, municipalities for COVID tra tracking and tracing. Uh, but they're looking to do it nationally. And it's, it's very similar to, Eric, I'm sure you're familiar with Health Pass and what other so IBM's health pass offering and what other people are doing in the space. But, but yeah, they're going to give us a presentation on the 20th of January. Um, as of right now, I'm thinking of canceling our session on uh, January 6th because that's the day I'm actually moving. But if Erica or someone else could take the reins and just guide a session like this, um, I'm, I'm happy to give out the control and give the claim host to anyone and, and you can record the session and just take notes. But uh but yeah, I will not be able to make it on the 6th of January, but I'll, I'll feel free to make it an open forum for anyone else to join. <laughs> Those are all my kind of updates. I'd love to talk about you know other things I'm seeing in the space. So like, I know the, the Health Utility Network too is actually, they've declared, they're right now in negotiations of declaring a winner sometime soon of who's going to be their main blockchain provider and services. Uh, and I know it was between my old employer, Consensus Health, R3 Corda, IBM, and some others. But uh, that decision is going to be coming around soon. And the Health Utility Network's looking to work on a lot of different cases. And that's interesting. I guess the only other thing of relevance is Pharma Ledger and some of the different use cases they're putting together. Pharma Ledger is a group within the EU with a lot of uh, pharmaceutical companies who have come together to solve specific problems of need for industry. And uh, I heard around the grapevines, they're actually looking to one of their um, use cases is going to be COVID ID vaccination tracking um, in the US first, in the Americas first before the EU, as they believe that they might be able to have a better, a broader impact in the Americas than in the EU. Um, but there's tons of use cases there. I could, I could go down the rabbit hole if anyone wants to dive into that more. But, but yeah, those are, those are things of interest. And I'm, I'm actually happy to hear other people's opinion and, and what they think about these things and, and other things they've seen in the space that maybe I'm not aware of.
Oh, hey, Mike. I was just going to say that's super exciting news about the Synaptic Health and Humana. Um, I worked on the Health Utility Network for a while, I think I told you. Um, and yeah, it's so hard to get something like that off the ground. And even though they've been around forever, um, it's good to hear. Synaptic's been around forever. It's good to hear that something's finally going to be used here really soon. I can't wait to see how that all, all turns out. Um, and yeah, I think the Health Utility Network, I'm pretty sure, uh, I don't know what they're called now, but I know that IBM's kind of stepped away from it and just they're like founding members, but they're not providing any kind of conveyor or any kind of blockchain platform as far as I know. But it'll be interesting to see what they end up using because I, you know, when I was working on it, we were totally using, um, you know, IBM was going to be the conveyor. So I don't, I don't know. But yeah, it's all really exciting. Thanks for the update. I didn't know about any of that. So um, yeah. I've been kind of out of the loop for a while. So yeah, thank you for all that. That's super exciting. Yeah, no, I, I think they were also leaning towards. So when I was on consensus, I don't know anything that's going on now, but they were leaning towards Collido because Collido has the ability to use Fabric, Corda, and Ethereum public and private, whether it's Quorum or whatever else. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they've had experience and exposure in building things for things like Humana and others, right? I, I think that maybe helping, that might help their credentials and their connection with consensus health. It was a specific uh, agreement in place that, um, that may be able to bring in specific healthcare expertise. So I don't know, it would be really interesting to see how it goes, but yeah, they're deciding on that coming this or next week. So probably this week, I think. But yeah. Nice. That, that's interesting, Mike. Uh, you know, let, let me tell you what is going on here in Mexico. You know, uh, we are, uh, you know, we have a, I believe the 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 rate of deaths uh, from COVID it's uh, it's uh, terrible here. It's around nine percent, ten percent from the uh, infected uh, people. So one of the things, uh, j just a little background information. I'm part of a committee in Mexico, who is a, an, an NGO. It's a it's an IT NGO where participate uh, almost all the uh, IT companies like uh, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, Facebook, uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, worldwide companies and local companies, right? Uh, one of the proposals of this uh, organization is that to bring uh, the best practices to to the uh, industries, governments, etc. Actually, we have a lot of uh, groups like like here in Hyperledger uh, for any specific uh, situation that the, for example, the government needs, uh, like uh, uh, taxes. We we create as a group the first uh, electronic invoice. I don't know, ten years ago, and and we set all the rules and and and. And this this organization is uh, it's uh, very good in terms of uh, how proceed and and to help uh, to the government uh, take action in 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 a different uh, uh, topics. Right? And right now we are in the group that uh, the name is uh, 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 Digital Helper, which uh, basically we are reviewing all the rules and all the laws that uh, already are in place. And some of them has been uh, not touched in maybe five or, or some of them 10 years, right? So one of the goals that we have for 2021 is to create that kind of best practices, uh, talk with the government and say, you know, the uh, new technologies like blockchains has a, uh, an incredible uh, benefits for the healthcare uh, portion of the, of the Mexican healthcare system. And, 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 and that's why I'm very interested, for example, what you are doing in other countries like in US. And because one of the things is that it's supposed that we are going to receive the first uh, vaccines in the third week of uh, of 
December from Pfizer. And of course, as you may know, uh, they, they have below, I don't know, 80, uh, 80 grades uh, uh, Celsius. So there is a lot of infrastructure that uh, the healthcare system has to put in place. But um, the problem is that, and one of the problems that we are trying to, to, to solve or at least to focus on is how we are going to do or perform the, the uh, vaccine uh, deployment because some of them has uh, two, two times uh, of uh, applications, right? Uh, every 21, year, 21 days. So uh, I'm very interested in how the U.S. are handling this type of uh, uh, tracking because there is a lot of things that has to put in place because there is a lot of uh, actually uh, waste if uh, the, the, the handling of these new uh, vaccines are not handled very well. So basically this is one of the problems, the main problems that we are trying to figure out. Uh, just a scenario in Mexico, we don't have a huge uh, technology system uh, in our uh, healthcare system, by the way. Uh, actually, let me tell you that uh, I did a research uh, personally, and I find out that uh, for the most important systems, we have uh, a private system and a, and a government system, right? The government system attends around 30 million of uh, population Mexicans in Mexico, and uh, the other, the rest doesn't have a any any uh, kind of uh, let's say insurance or something like that and some of them 10 percent goes to the private uh, hospitals the problem is that there is no link and there is not uh, systems uh, uh, very well designed in in both sides even private and, and public uh, sector uh, healthcare organizations so we have a challenge because almost all the things uh, came into the paper or are silos for systems. But at the same time, it's a good uh, opportunity to create something that we can uh, create a, a, an interoperability system between the healthcare system. So, so there's a lot of uh, opportunities here, but the first, uh, uh, and the main, uh, let's say, problem that we have to solve is how we are going to apply the COVID-19 uh, vaccine in the next uh, months. The idea is that uh, uh, at the end of 2021, at least 30 million of, uh, of uh, citizens are going to be uh, uh, apply uh, with the with the vaccine so so if you have any comments uh, or or advices uh, you guys uh, about where i can find out some of the ideas that uh, came into other countries it will be great because it it, it could be a, a a great asset for us to figure out how we are going to handle this Anything from anyone? I know personally in, in the United States that we're facing very similar circumstances. So we had Operation Warp Speed for uh, in the United States to develop the vaccine and people got paid on those incentives to build the vaccine, but there haven't been as many uh, Operation Warp Speed foundations for the distribution of the vaccine and the, the suppliers of it. And there's not as many incentives right now in the United States for someone 
to high, they so there are incentives someone will charge a high markup to do the supply the cold storage of the vaccine to make sure it's under 70 degrees fahrenheit in transit uh, to build the centers at university hospitals research centers and public hospitals private hospitals to do that they're upcharging those the circumstances there's not much there are some federal funds going into those actions not as much but uh we are there is an incentive problem at the moment when it comes to the overall supply and distribution of trucks physical devices except people that are going into there i think other methods that we have done that are well though are are being able to uh, open source the papers of research as much as possible and having them uh, be accessed for free and not just in nature not just in landsat but all across the board those papers are not just peer reviewed but they are also able to be accessed on all the different uh, platforms and channels for knowledge and research. I know it's just like a knowledge exchange, knowledge management program, but that has actually helped um, vaccine specialists be able to review papers and review findings on different cases, which has been huge and the benefit of that. I'm not sure in particular how blockchain software technology really helps other than creating knowledge management exchange information. Blockchain doesn't help with the speed of this, it helps with maybe verifying identity across different borders and that may help faster rather than having to have you know physical analysts and people always be at the the point of location for authentication verification and actually that is one of my biggest missions right now is is how do we make consent and identity access management for patients and, and within our network and outside of the humana network um, easily accessible and authenticated and uh, having as much data and reporting information associated to that that wouldn't be compromisable or or be taken advantage of. So those are all things that we are uh, that I'm currently exploring. Uh, a lot of that is proprietary, so I can't share it today. But um, but I think the more you uh, understand, uh, so there's open source tools like Keycloak that have all these um, plugins and and Forge Rock as well. They have these identity access management plugins that help you do a lot of different things um, from granting consent to allowing patients to own identity, to having it stored on a phone, to having it stored on different, uh, to storing different attestation methods, whether biometric or not. Those I think are the ways to help mitigate and slow and speed up the process there. But that's only my experience. I, I haven't seen it implemented in large institutions yet, but I'm sure that's just because it's beyond my experience at the moment. Thank you very much, Mike. Yeah, it's a huge challenge, I believe, in for all the countries. But uh, I mean, uh, this is something that uh, we are in, and we have to resolve. I don't know how, but uh, we 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 are gathering information about how to handle. Any other advice that someone else can mention? Anyone have uh, other updates or challenges they're looking to kind of go through at the moment and, and maybe the group and some of our experiences or maybe something within blockchain or blockchain not technology or not blockchain technology could be irrelevant. I don't know if it's a challenge, Mike, but um, I, I was curious to get the group's thoughts on uh, the, the announcement on Health Lake yesterday by Amazon. And just kind of, you know, you get you guys work more direct in the field than I do, you know, so I, I'm just curious on kind of what, what type of impact you think that's going to have. Um, and, you know, where you know, where, where is that going to have the most utility? Is that gonna, is that going to be with larger enterprise uh, type organizations or, you know, startup or, you know, you know what, what have you. Um, uh, obviously I'm, I'm for, for, for my own reasons, I'm, I'm very curious about it. Um, but just, just interested to get everyone's thoughts on, on kind of the, you know, at least the, the press release and, you know, what they're claiming is, is, is possible, uh, now through AWS. 
No, it's a very good question. Uh, so I mentioned the health utility network as well. So the Amazon Health Lake is very similar to what the health utility network and what Linux for Health are looking to do as well. So there's this group within, I believe IBM's kind of orchestrated it all, but they're creating a, uh, a data lake of information that then could use all these different ways to plug in and, and, and incorporate the data information from that lake and then be associated to patient care and information. So the information would just stay in the lake and then multiple different identification, authentication, verification uh, sources could be able to, to go in there and to be able to verify across platforms. So uh, it has some mode of interoperability, but obviously it's not fully interoperability. There's a central component where IBM or whoever runs or owns the majority of the data that is in that lake would then be able to uh, charge and be granted payment for the access of the information from the lake. Um, Amazon's been doing a lot of interesting things recently with the announcement of Amazon Pharmacy, and they're able to provide pharmaceutical goods at a small, at a lower price than a lot of the larger competitors in the United States can. I don't know if they've expanded pharmacy outside of the United States, but it could be a, that could be a possibility. I'd have to double check on that. But I'm actually familiar with a couple of people that worked on this team called PillPack. PillPack is a team that got acquired by Amazon and they've pretty much fueled the ability to have remote pharmacy delivering of drugs and meeting all the required standards in place for them to be able to to run this uh this offer and uh and yeah it's, it's exciting stuff but I, I definitely see um health data patient data oriented lakes becoming a thing in the future and and making sure and not and also giving the ability so every ID or any authentication method can be added into there, as well as some people are looking to do self-sovereign patient data lakes within this, and, and they're, they're, using, they're trying to use the Ethereum network and, and the attestation of using a Web3 credential to then let you own the private keys and own the data that's associated to your private key out of the lake, while also logging into Web2 authentication application methods, just like username, password, login, and what we call in the United States an MPI number, uh, which is a patient identification number that's unique and associated to people, rather than a social security number because a lot can be um, manipulated with a social security number within the United States. So yes, I definitely see a lot of um, companies try, trying to create the same uh, solution across, uh, across many different teams. Yeah, the one, you know, the one thing that does concern me a little bit about it, you know, it, it, it seems like there's like a mini gold rush going on right now for, for, for patient data, right? Because the market's supposed to balloon up to $150 billion, right, in the next, you know, five, or, or $750 billion, whatever it is, over the next five years, right? I forget what the, 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 the figures are with CAGR, but, um, I, you know, and with all that focus on, you know, hey, we, we can create monetization through, you know, through, through, through data or, or, or some, you know, some touch point on data. Um, you know, it seems like a lot of things are being done in the name of patient care or, or in the name of, of trying to, to make, you know, healthcare better, you know, air fingers quote, but it, at the, at the same time, it, you know, it, it, most of what I'm seeing at least or observing is, is specifically, you know, around managing or monetizing that data in some, in some aspect and not so much on streamlining care and taking the inefficiencies and inadequacies out of, out of the current healthcare environment. Um, so I, I do get worried about that a little bit, you know, you know, what, you know, when, when are we going to be able to take, find some things that are going to be able to take the next step to, to, to really, you know, impact care at a level where, you know, you're, you're going to see, you know, a lot of the waste, the, you know, the, the fraudulence, the, the mismanagement kind of siphoned out of it. Um, as opposed to, hey, we're, we're, we're going to focus on the piece that, that you know, is, is, is a booming market, you know, and, and, and granted, you know, I know everybody's got to, you know, you, you, you got to provide revenue at a certain point. Um, but, I, you know, I, I'd like to see some more use cases that are a little bit more married, married to, to both causes, because it just seems like a lot of it is, is very patient data centric. And in two, um, with the fire, so fire stands for fast healthcare interoperability records, uh, connecting into mobile applications and mobile devices. Uh, the app, and that has been tied to specifically the Apple Health Kit, where in Apple Health, within your iPhone, if you intake and inject, uh, 
you record information that's associated to your steps, your heart rate variability, your oxygen variability um, methods, and, um, yeah. and all sorts of different information that then that information could be kept into a fire standard and then put into a health lake as well. So that's where a lot of people are going to try and use these remote monitoring systems and make them not only um, not only to a standard where everyone can access them from a specific lake, but so that they could potentially be used by not just Apple, but maybe through Android devices and, and, and Google phones and other things. So, uh, so yeah, that's it's part of the goal and part of the master plan with all of it. But yeah, it's, I think it's going to be really tough to, to create a, a system where not every aspect of a record is paid on. And it's the redefinition of that is, the patient and you and I getting paid for holding and managing the information associated to us. Um, and we can do that. And I, I don't, but I don't know if, if everyday people or folks want to do that. They'll probably pay for the convenience still of having a third party manage and, and own and distribute records and information that's associated to care. But there might be a time where that cost gets too high and people are going to fight back and say, Hey, I mean, if I have to own and manage my records, so I save five hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars a year on this, I'm actually going to do that. And the people that can create a way to make it easy for patients to be able to own, manage, handle their information, and they may undercut that undercut that cost for all these other payer institutions, that may be a solution. But and that that's the only way I could see it as as, as being mitigated is when the cost is too high, patients really fight back. They want to take ownership of, and they want to become their own data analysts with their own records. That's, and also that we have a way that we can uh, make sure that those people are meeting regulation and standards and not just making up health records out of the blue. That's, that's what you have to solve. And I, I don't know if I have the perfect answer for it. Does that make sense? <laughs> Yeah, loud and clear. Yeah. Yeah. Leah, how's everything going? Hi, Mike. Sorry I've missed a couple of weeks. I just had a meeting today and I just, uh, and it's been a bit, yeah, frantic the last few weeks. So, but I'm back on board. So, no worries. No worries. Today, we're just making it more of an informal session, uh, discussing all things across the board. Um, when it oh, sure. Updates. We gave a lot of updates earlier about what, what's going on in the blockchain ecosystem world. Um, right. Yeah. Um, Paris Blockchain Week's on today and tomorrow if anyone's interested in joining as well. And I listened to Robert Miller's um, podcast with my friend Tasha. Tasha's actually one of our advisors on our um, on Qua Factor. So that was it was excellent. Congratulations to him. Yeah. Was it Rob or was it Ray? No, Robert. Oh, Robert. Oh yeah, yeah, he did a podcast, I guess, for something else. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, so, he's a great speaker. Gives great insight. He is very impressive. So it was really good. Yeah. But yeah, if you could tell us, is there what what are some of the highlights from Paris Blockchain Week? Uh, are there anything that's helpful? Um, there's a lot on sort of DeFi and decentralized, but they've got a couple of healthcare. There was a there's one healthcare company called Medwise who have uh, a blockchain solution. I I only got a little bit of it actually. I only caught half of it, but um, it's. I just heard you say it's uh, very focused around patient data, so that's that's a similar solution where they're connecting healthcare to um, uh, sort of uh, patient records and stuff and and telemedicine using blockchain as well. So they're starting to get onto the exchange of health records using that. Um, so that's uh, one of the highlights. They're, they're also talking a bit more about uh, smart contracts, uh, very banking focused, but I think it's all very interesting. I'm, I'm finding it, you know, I used to get just, you know, solving some of the problems around different industries, I <laughs> think, or just like listening to them. So it's worth tuning into, but I think it's actually paid. So you have to pay for it so that's pretty bad luck on that but anyway maybe get cons consensus there's quite a few consensus people on there mike so maybe yeah, they can always is when it comes to blockchain yeah, yeah sure. yeah right i think they're actually supporting blockchain paris week so nice. yeah 
I don't know if you know, um, but I did actually switch employers. I'm no longer with Consensus anymore. Oh, I saw that come up. Yes. yes. <laughs> but I still connect with them almost on a daily, weekly basis. So. Okay. And you're still running this group, Mike? Yeah, okay. still, still running this group. So, yeah. yeah. Great. Cool. Yeah. Is there a story to that you can tell us? Or is oh, it yeah. No, it's, it's just, uh, I think... I love everyone on the consensus health team, love them doing all of that. I just think that I had a better opportunity to be able to influence not just in blockchain technology, but other means of technology for healthcare and life science uh, at Humana. And Humana's yes. uh, a US health insurance company, what they're most known for, but there's a lot of things attributed to the business, like Humana's creating their own pharmacy department, they're creating the consumer goods and products department. They have their own kind of, digital health and analytics arm, and they're looking to get into more of supporting aspects of biogenomics and, uh, and remote monitoring tools so that patients and users can be able to use these things uh, um, in their own settings. And so there's, there's a lot of different projects I can be able to do here. And, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, I think, um, I think Consensus Health though, they're, they may be winning this work within the Health Utility Network. Um, which is Health Utility Network is supposed to be a blockchain consortium with both payers, um, providers, and, uh, and a couple other nonprofit organizations that will want to work on use cases across the board, and, and they may influence the decision-making in that or not. Uh, it just depends, but they're deciding that winner within the Health Utility Network within this week, I believe. And, um, oh, okay. Okay, that would be interesting. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, I've missed out on a couple of weeks, so it's a bit of a shame, but okay, I've been reading my minutes. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Thank you for keeping up with us. But uh, Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Enjoy it. Any other updates from anyone else? Uh, I think we got into some good discussion, because, uh, and John, thank you for bringing up that point, and, and Guillermo, too, for giving the the POV, the point of view from, uh, from Mexico. That, that's very helpful. I wish I had anything in more concretely uh, for you to use as, as benefit. Actually, if you want to tell Leah your, 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 your problem, she might have some uh, experience from her EU and Australian connections. Sure. Yeah, uh, Leah, but maybe you, you miss a little bit uh, what I said, yeah. but in Mexico, we're trying to create, I'm, I'm part of uh, an NGO with an IT NGO who participate almost all the uh, worldwide IT companies like IBM, uh, Microsoft, uh, Amazon, etc. And, and the purpose of this group is to help the government and other industries with the best practices. And the challenge that we have, uh, as you may know, is uh, Mexico is the number one rate of death uh, deaths in, in, in the world. So mm -hmm. we have around one million and a half of infected people and we just reach uh, 110,000 deaths. So wow. the rate is very high, you know, like mm -hmm. nine, ter 10 percent. And uh, one of the things uh, that we are trying to do is uh, track and, uh, you know, we are trying to figure out how with uh, any, uh, any technology, but specifically with blockchain, we can track the application of the vaccines because it's supposed that the, the first, uh, there are actually seven stages uh, and it's based uh, in, in, in the kind of people that, uh, uh, it will be applied first, and and the the first the, the very first are you know all the doctors and all the nurses and and all the healthcare uh, mm -hmm. personnel. The next stage is for above uh, I believe 80 years old, and 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 it uh, you know going down. The goal is to in two. 2021 apply at least 30 million of vaccines mm -hmm. and we are thinking about uh, how we can uh, track all the applications because it's it's not easy to to have a database 
with the names and the number of people who has been applied. And, and as you may know, uh, uh, the, the, the application, we are going to apply the, fir the first state, the Pfizer uh, vaccine. So that means that uh, uh, it's supposed that it has uh, special handling because it has to be below uh, 80 uh, grade Celsius. Mm -hmm. And you know, there is a lot of things that we have to keep in mind. But one sure. of the things that we are looking for is ideas about how we can handle all the uh, application for the populations here in, 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 in Mexico, because uh, we are uh, um, a country with uh, 120 million citizens, and uh, there is no too much uh, technology into the healthcare systems. And by the mm -hmm. way, I, I forgot to mention that the 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 military is is going to receive the vaccines and, and, and apply the vaccines. It, it won't see that, but the, 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 the army is, is the one who is going to apply the vaccines, you know, and handle. Like I said, they're administering. And do all the things. But they're, they're, the army is not prepared to, to, to perform that, you know, they're, they, they don't have... Uh, uh, systems and one of the things that we are trying to do is to give an advice about how we can handle this uh, process. Sure. So um, thank you uh, for that. <laughs> yeah, that's a really incredibly difficult problem, and it's actually something we're tackling at the moment in our startup. So we're we're looking at. Um, how we capture uh, vaccination, record of vaccinations. So through a vaccination certificate, and I think you may have had a talk on immunity passports, but we're looking specifically at vaccination certificates that uh, patients can then show, have a documented proof, but also as part of that, as well as the scanning of medications to make sure that they're um, legitimate medications as well. So our app manages that as well. So we've thought about these steps that are required. And I think one of the first steps is being able to have that data available for a patient, but then have that de-identified information available to the government to say, okay, this is also, but not have all that, that data on this is, you know, so-and-so person, you know, 83 years old, not have those specific um, data around the name of the patients, but a de-identified de de form. And the idea as well about having a patient health record is that so if those chronic disease patients um, have other illnesses and so on, that can be recorded on a system that could then be, okay, they're el eligible for this this vaccination as part of their high risk group, for example, or they've got an oncology condition or something like that, that then deems them to be the first candidate to, to be um, eligible for this. Now, of course, this is not gonna be fail proof in the first stages of this, but I think it's very important to have some type of record attached to an identity. So having a person's identity um, recorded on, on um, an app or a device and then have a, a vaccination certificate that links that patient to that that, that record um, with a QR code, and then also being able to scan in medications along the drug supply chain. So we actually, in 2019, did a medication supply chain from France to Venezuela, and we actually were able to record medications on that. That will all be our MVPs, that's all integrated as part of our system already. So um, I'm happy to talk about this more with you offline, if you like. Can I? When you can, we'd love to have a presentation here too. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Let, let's do right. it. I... The heat is on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> sure. Sure. But I, yeah, I'm very happy to, to, to um, talk you through how you could potentially um, set up. We could maybe think about doing a paper on that and how, how you could present that to government around um, what that would look like. Yeah, I think this is a really important point as well, and we 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 okay. focused a lot on. Yeah, I, I just put it into the chat. Yeah, got it. Yeah. No, no, I was about to tell you that uh, I put it on on, on okay. the chat uh, my email. Just uh, 
if you can send me an email, we can catch up. I don't know. Sure. You, you are in Europe, right? In France. I'm in France. Yes, that's right. Uh, okay. Yeah, right. we, we, we can talk each other and we can figure out uh, if there is some opportunities that we can uh, perform here. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, I've got your details. Thank you. That's great Thank stuff. You. Thanks for coming to the last minute to give us. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much I was for actually advice, yeah. just talking to an investor in the US, actually, and um, that was a very interesting conversation because they were they were like, okay, are you interested in work here and what's your <laughs> what's your status? What are you looking for at the moment? And I said money for <laughs> to develop my app. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where we're at. But um, maybe we can all collaborate on this together. Come to the States. I hear Philadelphia is great this time of year. <laughs> Mike, that sounds cold. <laughs> right, summer in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I wish I could visit my family in Australia right now. Yeah, I mean, actually, sure. I think the U.S. can go to Australia at the moment, but uh, I don't want to go on a plane or an airport hub. That's how you really get COVID is the hub, not the plane yeah, itself. Just waiting totally. for a flight for hours. Yeah. Well, interesting in love, interestingly enough, I got invited to Mexico by my friend who had gone over there and um, was saying that it's actually not too bad there. I don't know where she's getting her news from, but it's clearly not up to date. So sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. No worries at all. Um, but hey, thank you for, for hopping on with us. Uh, anyone else, any other updates that you'd like to add to the group before we, uh, before we sign off? All right, well, everyone, thank you very much for the time meeting today for another healthcare general meeting. Uh, we do have a planned session on December 23rd. I know in the States, though, uh, a lot of people are probably not going to be around due to um, the Christmas holiday, so I probably want to cancel that. And as of now, I may cancel our session on January 6th. That's because I'm moving into a house. I'm going to not be a city person anymore. I'm going to be a suburbanite. And so I'm very disappointed in that. <laughs> not really. I'm, I actually made this decision. So it's, uh, but yes. So uh, I may have uh, Erica or John actually lead that session on the 6th. Uh, but yeah, other than that, um, thank you everyone for the presentation today. And uh, if we don't see before the holiday of Christmas, thank you very much for uh, for joining and have a also happy Hanukkah, happy everything. There's so many holidays going on at this time. So, um, and I'm sure in other countries we're celebrating other means like uh, happy Diwali just happened recently. So, um, so yes, everyone, good day. Thank you for joining, and we will talk soon. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Bye.